Hey guys, I hope you're having a fantastic day. Thank you so much for joining us. Tis the season to be jolly and to raise awareness for inflammatory bowel disease. Yes, December is Inflammatory Bowel Disease Awareness Month and I have inflammatory bowel disease, so I'm going to be doing a little bit of an awareness video for you guys today. Um, inflammatory bowel disease, for those of you who don't know, consists actually of two main diseases, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Crohn's gets a lot more attention because it's a bigger population of people who have it. Um, both though are autoimmune diseases which means that something goes haywire in your immune system. Today though I'm going to just take the time to focus on ulcerative colitis. I have five random facts about ulcerative colitis and I do hope with all my heart that you learn something and that you think about sharing this video to help us raise awareness. So there are three main types of ulcerative colitis. Proctitis, which means that the lower colon and anus are inflamed. Left side colitis, which the left side of your large intestine and colon are inflamed. And then total colitis, with ulcerative colitis, which is uh, inflammation throughout the um, large intestines and your colon and anus, so more is involved. Um, originally I was diagnosed with left side and then they had found out that I am actually total um, based off of different um, colonoscopies and when you're diagnosed at a younger age um, things do change because of your age and your body's still developing and maturing so and things can just change in a normal person just because um, things you know in your environment change and things in your body changes throughout your life so next number two it is diagnosed through a series of different tests and I'm just going to go over the major ones with you uh, blood work is a big thing there is an inflammatory bowel disease panel of blood work that can be run and that's usually sent off to I believe California it does if you're sending it off to California it takes a little bit longer to get back uh, I believe for the autoimmune panels that go over to California it's about two to four weeks for them to come back and um, for generic labs like autoimmune type stuff you'd probably get your answers within 48 to 73 hours or so so there's a little bit more of a wait but they are more accurate and these types of labs um, some of them I've seen where they're also able to tell you if you're at risk for IBD or at risk like for another autoimmune so it'll also say like oh patients at high risk or no risk or what be it all right they can also do stool tests, which also helps with ruling out anything acute because if you're having belly issues and you've never had them before, that's definitely something that they want to check off the list, that you, don't, you didn't contract a parasite, you don't have um, an acute affection going on, uh, anything like you know, C. diff or anything else. There's a lot that can be going on in the belly and in the GI tract. We definitely underestimate that, I just think, as a population. Um, and then, of course, CTs, which CAT scans, um, they can run other imaging. I feel like CAT scans, though, for ulcerative colitis or Crohn's are definitely the most common. Um, and some of these things do overlap, I do want to say, with Crohn's disease, so <laughs> putting that out there. And then, of course, your colonoscopy, which is a scope which most of us are put to sleep for, but hey, you can opt to stay awake. So basically, for anybody who's unaware, they um, will give you sedation um, and they stick a scope into your rectum and take a peek and a look around and um, they see if there's any ulcers, um, any inflammation. They take some biopsies and they get a lot of really good information from colonoscopies. All the other tests provide good information. Nothing in the world replaces your colonoscopy that is a wealth of information any scope I've learned with diseases they're going to give you the most amount of information they are unfortunately the most invasive um, for a patient though with IBD they're usually set up on a schedule of when they need to get scoped unless something emergent happens so like if I call up my gastro and I'm like oh my gosh I'm in excruciating pain and I'm seeing a lot of blood, I'm not able to eat, I'm trying to think, what else? Maybe like, I don't know, I'm running to the bathroom 30 times a day, like help me, and say we up my steroids. And then I call him and I'm like, hey, nothing's working, still sick, and so like we tweak more stuff. 
and then I'm still sick, then likely, and then say we did other imaging, and then we tweaked the meds more, and I'm still sick, he would go in and do an emergency um, colonoscopy or up endoscopy, depending on, you know, where the pain and symptoms seem to be more located. So that's definitely always a possibility when you, um, but if you're having like normal symptoms and like normal stuff going on, um, you'll be set up on a schedule of when to get scoped. And that's generally speaking, what I've ever heard is between two and five years. According to the United Kingdom's website, if one parent has ulcerative colitis, a child would only have a 2% chance of having IBD in general, which is completely mind-blowing in my opinion. Um, I kind of expected it to be a little bit higher. I know though they're not like certain, is there like an IBD gene or is it more so like an autoimmune gene, which is the same thing in lupus, which is how <laughs> I knew that fact. So, like I said earlier, number four, alternative colitis is actually rare, which I didn't know until this year. Um, and I've almost been diagnosed for, man, a little over 10 years, which seems really, really crazy. Like, time flies. Um, I did not know that it was rare because IBD in a whole is common. So I just thought, I assumed that ulcerative colitis was common, to be honest with you. Um, so that was just interesting to learn. All right, and number five, you can run into complications, and I am one that firmly believes that knowledge is power. Um, so I share these not to scare you, like if you have ulcerative colitis, these um, complications are extremely, extremely rare, but I feel like, like if you were in extreme dream pain or having like really weird symptoms like knowing the complications and knowing when to go seek treatment and help and when to call the doctor in my personal opinion that makes a difference and that can save somebody's life even if you don't have ulcerative colitis or Crohn's or like a chronic illness but you're aware and you see like oh your friend and they're like oh this and this is happening you could be like have you talked to a medical professional and you know what at the end of the day it might be a little bit of an awkward conversation I'll give you that, but it could save somebody's life. So we are going to jump into those complications and I have to read all of them because I can't memorize this stuff. <laughs> okay. Thickening of the intestine walls, sepsis, which is a blood infection which can spread and that's what makes it really dangerous. Blood infections are nothing to, you know, joke around with. They are very, very, very serious liver disease, dehydration, which is bad, but compared to the others, is not as bad. So that one, you know, we can work with. Intestinal bleeding, rapid swelling of the colon, kidney stones, inflammation throughout the body, which is just so mind-blowing sometimes. People don't realize inflammatory bowel disease is a systemic disease, meaning it affects every system in your body. Your inflammatory bowel disease, believe it or not, affects your joints. It can like affect in like some cases like your eyes or like other weird random things. Um, so it's always good to like keep an eye out for like things that are changing and mention them to your doctor. <laughs> um, Rupture of the colon, blockage, stricture, which is narrowing caused by ongoing inflammation, and a fistula, which is an abnormal channel connecting one organ to another. All right, guys, so this video is probably way longer than I anticipated, but I think I say that in like every video lately, so I'm gonna try to stop just saying that. Um, I would really, really, really appreciate it if you all hit that thumbs up button. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and go and share this video because ulcerative colitis, like I said, is not talked about nearly as much as it should be. And it's something that we need more awareness on. So please help me in raising awareness this holiday season for inflammatory bowel disease. I hope you guys have a fantastic day.